Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. I actually just came back from the flower exchange and I bought so many different things that kind of inspired me because today I want to do floral arrangements for you and I want to show you how to do pretty spring floral arrangements using maybe non-traditional colors. And during the springtime, we always think of pinks and pastels, like light yellows and light blues. Um, but I wanted to kind of play with other different tones, like maybe more saturated yellows. I even brought in one of my favorite flowers, which is the white Phalaenopsis orchid. Um, these are really interesting varieties of ranunculas. These are clony ranunculas, and I think they're really special and even more ruffled than the traditional uh, ranunculas. Um, here, I'm, I, I put together sort of a sample of a small little centerpiece that you can have on your table, but I'll describe what that could look like and how you can make it really pretty. But inside here, we have the white Cymbidium orchid. Um, I have some lemon leaf, which I'm actually using for a really, really cool event at Moo Restaurant in downtown Boston. Um, but I'll surprise you with pictures at a future episode. And then, um, you know, we have some sunflowers, which are very traditionally spring, but also fall. So it kind of harkens back to that season. And then we have some pretty purple stock flowers, some snowball viburnum, you know, the yellow roses. And then I have some different textures and varieties here. And then I have some really interested mums, which came in this sort of violet um, lime tonality. And I think it's really interesting and fun. So to start off our arrangements, I just want to go ahead and show you the two vases that I'll be working with. One is this, um, it's called a chic bud vase tray vase. And it has like all these different little bud vases stuck onto a tray. So it's actually one vase. And I really love using this. I've been using this ever since I started my own company two and a half years ago. And the first event I used it for, I used it in, its, in, in the color it comes in, which is white. And it also comes in gold too, but I bought it for white. And then I used all these white and green flowers inside of it. And that was a really exciting and beautiful event. And it was very, very pretty. Um, today, I actually spray painted the vase this sort of turquoise color because I like the idea of these sort of like bright yellows and greens and like other flowers and the, even the purple sort of like, you know, um, complementing this turquoise. And I think it can make a really exciting um, color effect. And then I have this more sort of um, simple white ceramic square vase that I've already filled with our um, Smithers Oasis uh, foam block that I've cut to kind of fit into the vase. So I'm demonstrating it there. So, and we'll work with that. I think the first vase I wanna work with is probably this white ceramic square, just because, you know, when you go shopping for a vase, um, it's hard to find a vase like this unless you shop online. So more than likely you'll find something like this, like at the dollar store or home goods or even online, it's more readily available and accessible. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and design with this one first. So with this particular vase, um, filling it with foam really allows you to do a lot. It allows you to secure, especially because it's such a low, shallow vase. Um, you want something that goes, goes and secures the flowers. Now, if you wanted an alternative to the foam, you could create a grid using clear tape going across and then perpendicular. And that has a really nice effect of um, keeping the flowers and the, the greenery secure you would have to then fill it with water. In this case, we're working with a foam block that has already been soaked in water. And then we're gonna fill it with a little bit of water um, to make sure that it stays hydrated for a number of days, you know, because it'll eventually soak up all the water inside the foam block. So you wanna go ahead and fill it with water and refill it every single day to make sure it's always hydrated. The first thing you wanna do when you're working with foam inside of a vase is to green the arrangement. And what that means is that you're essentially adding greenery to it to cover the foam mechanic because the foam mechanic is, for all intents and purposes, it's considered an unattractive feature in an arrangement. So you wanna go ahead and cover it up with something beautiful like leaves. In this case, I wanna use, um, first I wanna use our lemon leaf, and I love this lemon leaf. It has such a bright green color, and it's also very, um, full, it can create a very full effect. And so when you're starting to green your arrangement, you wanna go ahead and start to create a shape with it. And that's the fun part of when you start greening, because it allows you to start thinking about what shape do you want this arrangement to take on. So already I've had it sort of creating this sort of um, rising effect, which I think is really interesting and can make for a very cool arrangement. So what I'm gonna do is continue to add the lemon leaf. So I'm gonna grab several more bunches from what I bought at the flower market this morning. That way we can go ahead and um, start to cover up that, that foam. So I'm just kind of gonna start sticking them in. 
And you'll notice I'm not just, um, you know, I, I'm even kind of going diagonal downwards towards the table. You know, you don't have to follow any specific set rules. I teach a class at the Boston Center for Adult Education, and one of my students asked me, oh, like how many stems of the greenery should you use? Is there a formula? And I said, honestly, it just has to feel right. If it feels right, then it's a beautiful arrangement, and it's an arrangement that you can be proud of. And every single time I teach that class, all the students create something different. Rarely, never have I seen two arrangements look alike because I'm essentially telling them to follow their own voice, in other words. So here I'm just continuing to add greenery and you'll start to see this green foam block disappear slowly but surely, which is great because that's exactly the effect that we wanna accomplish. We wanna get rid of that foam, but you know, thank it for securing our greenery and flowers. So I'm just gonna kinda continue to do that and go through the motions of filling it in. And I like sort of the shape this is taking. And you can see like what started off, you probably wondered, oh, how many flowers can you fit into this small little vase? But look, like look how far out this is growing and how full this is already becoming. And you know, it creates an exciting, um, you know, it, you, you should be excited for what's to come in other words. And I'm gonna keep adding. Not too much because I actually want to use another greenery too. I don't want to just stick with that one. And there's this beautiful variegated green that I found at the market. And it has actually some red, almost like it almost looks like it's been burnt by the sun because it's been staying out in the sun too long. And I really like that coloration. So I want to include that as well. And you'll start to see that kind of mix really beautifully in with our lemon leaf to add a different sort of texture and color. And I'm just gonna continue to kind of stick them in, kind of following the same motion I did with the lemon leaf, just to make sure that they're kind of following the same story, but you know, sort of tucking it in here and there, but keeping it um, noticeable so it, it's special in its own right. And then I'm just gonna keep filling in. And sometimes too, when I'm designing, especially if I'm designing for a group of people, I'll, tr I'll lift the arrangement and turn it my way so I can look at it. And I, I'm very satisfied with the direction it's going in. I like how full it's becoming, but not too full, because remember, we want to add our flowers to it. And then, um, but I want to make sure there's enough greenery that's sort of blocking, kind of covering the foam, so we don't have to work too hard with flowers to make that happen. And then I'm just going to keep adding. And you're probably starting already to see like sort of this arrangement becoming nice and full. What started off as a small little white square is now becoming this very full green. And honestly, like you don't have to add flowers to your arrangement. You can literally make a beautiful arrangement just using greenery or different types of greenery. You know, if you're ever walking around Franklin Park or nearby park and you know, I mean, if there are shrubs and there are weeds, you can use them to turn something into a really beautiful arrangement at home at virtually no cost because you've already sort of, it's, it's growing outside in the wild. So you don't have to worry about purchasing them. I love this. I really like what this um, foliage did to the arrangement. Okay, and I still see some pockets of oasis, but I'm okay with that for now because what I wanna start doing is adding our flower varieties. So I'm gonna like actually turn to my left and I love these little ranunculas. So I'm gonna clip off, um, this is a little aged, so I'm already noticing some little brown spots, but that's okay because it's not. it doesn't mean that it's dead. It just means that it's aged a little bit. So we wanna go ahead and remove any sort of blemishes or brown spots. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start inserting this into the arrangement. There we go. And you'll see that I'm kind of sticking them in different areas, which I think is really beautiful and nice. And again, I'm kind of, you know, it depends on where you're creating this arrangement, but I love the idea that it's sort of traveling in different directions and it's, you know, you can see it, like you want to design for the front of the arrangement as well as the back, especially if you're giving this as a gift to somebody. So I'm not ignoring the back as I'm designing and I'll show you the back after we finish. Now I'm gonna head and grab some sunflowers from back here. 
I love sunflowers and they're so easy to work with because they have these really cool, interesting shapes. So I'm gonna pluck one of these out and then I'm gonna insert here. And I love how it starts to kind of rise up and above the arrangement. So it's really starting to feel like a nice springy garden arrangement. And then I'm gonna stick it in the front too. And notice the way that it's not a straight stem. So it really allows you to have this like playful motion, which is fantastic. And then I'm gonna stick it even down here. Beautiful. And I'm gonna grab a few more stems because I'm really liking the yellow in this arrangement. And a reminder to pay attention to your backside too. So I'm gonna grab a few more and come over here in the back. Wonderful. And now I wanna grab a different flower. So I think, um, you know, we just have one of these yellow mums, but I think they're so beautiful and they're so full and they have a really nice fragrance too. So I'm gonna go ahead and pluck that out and I'm going to stick it right here in the center, just like that. You know, it may not be immediately noticeable in the arrangement, especially if you look at it straight on, but you are gonna see that yellow tone and that texture, which is so beautiful. All right, great. And there is another green that I wanna work with, but it's not necessarily, you wouldn't think of this as like a foliage. It's actually a flower. This is called Snowball Viburnum, and it, it's green here, but it also comes in white. And I love the white, because I think it's so beautiful. And I've actually never worked with the white before. I've only ever worked with the green but I work with this flower all the time. And I've seen this available all year long, which is fantastic. So if you love it as much as I do, you can actually use it all year long. But look how beautiful that is and how it creates this other green color. We have the lemon leaf, we have that sort of burnt foliage, and now we have this beautiful snowball viburnum, which is great. I love the way it looks. And it's just like filling our table with so much beauty. And I'll maybe gonna stick it out here in the front and let it droop and cascade a little bit. I love this like very natural movement that it has. It's not too stiff, which I think is fantastic. What's interesting too, you may not have noticed this, but it has a very woody stem. Whenever we are working with a woody stem flower, you always wanna cut the stem at a perpendicular, like at a cross basically, and make sure you go up and down and side to side. That way it's able to drink water more effectively. In this case, for this arrangement, I actually wanna just cut off the individual blossoms and use those in the design. So once again, I'm kind of paying attention to our backside too, just making sure that that's nice and beautiful. And then I'm gonna go ahead and insert this over here. It's really cool, because it looks so similar even to our ranunculus, which I think is great. Okay. And then I'm gonna add one to the side over here. And then I'm gonna grab a few more stems, not too many. And then I like the idea of this one being right over here. And now again, I'm gonna lift because I just wanna make sure, because I'm seeing this from an aerial view, but I wanna make sure that I'm getting this appropriately. So now, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and place one more in the front and then I'm all set with our Snowball Viburnum. So I'm just gonna stick this one right in the front. And so as you start to fill up your arrangement, you'll notice it's gonna get harder and harder to insert your flowers into the oasis because it's filling up and the stems start to kind of fight with each other. But that's why you should just pay attention. Start with the greenery, then start to add your flowers. I love this rose. This rose feels so gardeny to me and it's bringing in these pink color tones. I like the outer petals a lot. They're, they're called guard petals. Um, so they have like some green veins and they're meant to protect the flowers as they're growing, but you are more than welcome to pluck them off as long as you're gentle plunking them off. So then I'm gonna go ahead and insert some of them there. And I just like that it's bringing this really beautiful color. Okay, I'm gonna grab about five more stems of those. Making sure to insert some in the back, in the front. In the back again. Now my, I don't wanna forget about the sides. Okay, great, I love that. 
And then um, I do have some of these beautiful stock flowers, which I can use to bring out another really rich saturated color, but also extend the um, arrangement outwards even more. So I'm gonna kind of start sticking that in. Perfect. You know, when people often ask like, oh, what colors look best together? Should you use complementary colors? And it really just depends. I mean, I've created arrangements using such a mix of colors. And it just, I mean, I think the only thing that matters is, is like if ultimately it looks good and if it looks good to you. Like I would never have thought to put the stock flower in this arrangement, but because of the different blends of flowers and colors, it actually kind of fits. And also it has greenery in it, which makes it work. I'm gonna add a few more of those stems. And then insert in the back. All right, great. And then, let's see, we do have some roses over here. I might actually include some of these because I think they'll make it nice and fuller. I'll start in my back area over here. Then I'll go to the side over here. Then I will continue in the front over here. Beautiful. And then I'm going to continue to add probably three more. And then I'm just going to walk to the front to make sure I'm getting everything I need. Perfect. And then come over here. Ah, great. Down below. Okay. I'm gonna take a few more. Okay. And then, let's see, I'm gonna stick one above. Right there, perfect. And I'm gonna walk around just to kind of check it out. And let me actually um, add one more of these sunflowers. And you see what I mean? Like it starts to get a little harder to find a spot for them. But once you do, and also sometimes when it's hard to find a spot, I take that as a sign that it's not meant to be. Um, all right, perfect. And then I'm just gonna kind of lift it and face it towards me again. Okay, I'm gonna put another flower in here because it feels like there's a little hole over there. And I think I'm going to put a rose. and just stick it in there. Or actually, I think I wanna put one of my other little roses. I think this is better. Ah, great, okay. So now this is it. This I consider to be a complete arrangement. This last sunflower that I put in, I don't love the shape of it. I'm gonna twist it. There we go. But I love how it, now it feels like a very full garden. We have lots of different varieties of flowers and it creates like a really beautiful effect. But I think this is really pretty and giving this to give to anybody would be super special. Um, so I'm gonna set this to the side right now. And then I wanna show you this other vase that I brought. Very quickly, this vase right here, if you had a series of these cylinder vases and fill them with the cymbidium orchid, you could then fill it with water up to maybe two inches below and then drop a floating candle inside. And that makes such a pretty tablescape. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and upload an image of an arrangement I did recently where I showcased that. And I think you're gonna love it a lot. So I'm gonna place this over here. This is the last vase I wanna work with. It's a very quick design and I can design it very, very quickly for you. But I do wanna demonstrate it because it's one of my favorite vases. So essentially, this is like any, anyone can do this. You can be the, you know, you could have zero experience or knowledge of flowers, but you can design inside of these vases and create something really beautiful. So what I'm gonna do essentially, I mean, similar to our other arrangement, I'm gonna start with a little bit of greenery and just kind of stick those in and then I'm gonna just continue to add greenery, you know, and add as much as you like or as little. You know, this arrangement can be all, you know, it could be, have no greenery, it could have some greenery, it could have all greenery, you decide. But I've kind of just quickly greened the arrangement right now. And 
and then I'm sticking that in. And so now I get to have fun and stick the flowers in, right? So, and this is so quick and fun. You know, you could just grab any, any ones that you want and start playing around with it. You can make it as tall as you want, as vibrant as you want. And I'm gonna flip this around to make sure you get to see what it looks like from all sides. I'm even gonna play with our orchid over here, which has been sitting over there, but you can even bring this inside, create something nice and full. I'm actually gonna cut the stem of that one. Let's see, it's a little tricky. Once you get into these bigger blooms, but you can actually pluck some of the orchid blossoms off, and then that way you make it more manageable to work with. There we go. And then I'm gonna add some roses. And then stick that in there. Okay, I'm gonna grab some of our stock to bring in that purple. Oh, some of our Snowball Viburnum, which is always pretty and gives us that nice greenery to play around with. A few of our really nice roses over here. Okay. And then one last little touch, and I think you could continue and continue, continue and add, continue to add, but I think this feels really good. I may just add a few more. But the idea is that you can essentially just add flowers to whatever effect you want to, to create like a really pretty arrangement. So you can clip that off and then you can actually use another part of the orchid stem over here. Great. And then I'm gonna come around to the front to see the arrangement. Okay. Great, I may not actually use the orchid and it's okay to pull out flowers. You don't have to commit to it after placing it in. But in this case, I just don't think the orchids work that well. So I'm gonna take them out. And then I might add another sunflower, but keep it closer to the vase so it feels nice and full. There we go, that's nice. And then I have these over here. I might add this last sunflower. Okay, better. Then I'm gonna yank this one out. Okay, great. So we, here we have two, or I should say three very simple spring arrangements to dress up your tablescape for the new season. Um, and it's something really simple that you can do at home. You know, the first arrangement that we designed, it used all of the oasis and you were just, we started out by greening it and then we added the flowers and you can literally buy a bunch of flowers at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's or Stop and Shop. And you can do something very similar at home with a very inexpensive vase. If you didn't have Oasis, which you can order online, 
You can also um, just fill a vase with water and add a lot of greenery to it and that creates a support system for the flowers. Here in this case, we have a cylinder vase and you can fill a number of different cylinders of varying heights with a submerged flower like the Cymbidium orchid. Fill it with water, add a floating candle to the top of it and voila, you have a really beautiful tablescape. And then of course, our little chic bud vase tray which you can spray paint any color. Just fill it with nice, beautiful flowers and just have fun with it and let them dance. I mean, you can't really go wrong with a vase like this. You're just filling it with flowers that you love and you can enjoy at home on a tablescape, surround it with candles, and then you have a really beautiful look. Everybody, thank you so very much for joining me today. It's been a long day, you know, coming from the flower market with all these beautiful flowers, but I'm so happy I was able to sh share some design tips with you for the Easter, um, for the spring, and I hope you get to take them home and use them at home for yourself. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to reach me, please feel free to visit www.jngeventconsulting.com or review some of our past episodes on BNN TV. Um, once, thank you to our sponsors, Glenn and Janice Williams of the Rosenville Arts Alliance. Until next time, see you then.